I want to thank the Board of Directors for having me come to speak. I want to really offer up our collective prayers to Richard Levy and Maureen in that special place that they are now. I want to thank my friend C.J. Spear for uh, bringing me back to the unity. One day he said, come on, go to church with me. I said, where do you go? Come on. I mean, I've been going to unity for years. <laughs> And thank my guest, uh, former Representative Sandra Spalding Hughes, for coming out to share with us today. You know, our topic is the work, the journey. A little about my style, I, I believe in the mastermind principle. Where two or more gathered on one accord, I am among them. The making power. So whatever we do today, it's going to be because we're all together on one accord. And the message that comes forth comes from us collectively. I also like to uh, get some help. And when I say help, I mean this, you know, we call it super learning. That the key to really putting the learning, the message inside is to get the senses involved. So I like to do uh, things I call in response. For example, if I say, how do you feel? You answer love. Let's try that. How do you feel? Love. How about beautiful? How do you feel? Beautiful. Wow. I also like to do affirmations. You know, affirmations are statements of truth. Whatever you believe. Oh, I see my good friend, Pastor Theo from Nigeria. Welcome, Pastor Theo. Thank you. You came all the way here to see me. <laughs> Affirmations. You know, we say so many things to ourselves during the day. Our subconscious mind cannot distinguish between what's, what we, what is real and what is unreal. Everything the subconscious mind accepts is true. And so say only good things about yourself. I am love. Let's say that together. I, I am, am love. love. I am beautiful through and through together. I, I am beautiful through and through. through. We uh, talk about this path, this journey, this work. And you know, as we live our lives, we, we really have a human experience. You know, we interact with people, things happen. But we are really spiritual beings having a human experience. In other words, we are created by the universe of the God consciousness. We have a human experience and then we return and a never-ending cycle of increase, enjoyment. Everything we experience is for a purpose, for a passion. When we live our lives, things happen, positive or negative. Especially in the beginning, when you start on the path, you notice that there's so much stuff that we have to clear out of our lives. You know, these interactions that we have are, are like purification to remove the impurities from us. You know, we were raised, we didn't have a big choice about our parents. <coughs> and many of us were, were raised in environments where we were not necessarily loved and not honored. And that creates a whole other vibration in itself. And so therefore, the experiences that we encounter in life, a part of our connection with God consciousness is to always assume that they're good, that they're for a purpose. Sometimes it's hard to see the purpose. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have some really negative experiences in your life, and it's hard to see the purpose. But if we frame it so that we know that this is for good, this is for God, this is to help us move on the path, the journey that we must take. Each time we go through these experiences, it, it emboldens us, it empowers us, it touches us inside. You know, I love the term namaskar because it's like we are all in one space. Honor that space in you, with that space in me, where we are one. There's the connectedness. Each and every one of us in this room are connected in a spiritual way. When I spent time in Israel studying the Bible and using the Bible as, a, as a really like a tour guide to, 
to go to the different places, Capernaum, uh, the Sea of Galilee, uh, Jerusalem. And you know, it, it really gave the Bible life, you know, to see that these places really exist. But also we began to get what we call a spiritual interpretation of the Bible where each and everything in the Bible, each and every person, each and every experience is personal. Yes. It's really you. The Bible is your personal testament. And each and every aspect of it is some part of you. Yes. You're Moses. You're Jesus. You're also Pharaoh. Yes. And so we, we speak today from the book of Exodus. And Exodus is really, I call it the, the, the book of goings out. The book of going from darkness to light. Going from where we are to where we want to be. But isn't that what life is all about? Yes. Amen. <laughs> isn't that why we're here? Mm -hmm. To find direction, to find guidance, to find relationship, to take us on to the next level. And so we, we speak a bit about Moses. A concept I want to share with you is anything we go through, we must grow through it. Because if you don't grow through it, you will go through it again and again. Have you noticed that? <laughs> that when you get stuck in stuff, until you finally figure it out, you keep going through it again. You keep meeting the same people. You know, you say, man, everybody I meet dislikes me. Everybody I meet dishonors me. What is wrong with them? <laughs> but the lesson that we have to grow through is we're attracting that into our space and into our experience. And so now let's look at the path. What is, what is, what is the work, the journey, that journey, that evolution from where we are to where we want to be in the path as the steps of that journey? There are four steps on the path. I am, I will, I do, I become. I'll say it and then you repeat it after me. I am. I am. I will. I will. I do. I do. I become. I become. You know, in the Bible, in Exodus, it says Moses led his flock to the back of the desert. And the back of the desert is a quiet place. You really, it's, it's a challenge to communicate with God consciousness in noise, in clutter. Now you can, as you say, go into the closet, close the door, put up the shields. <laughs> but Moses went to, the, to the, the back side of the desert, that calmness, and he came upon the mountain of God, God consciousness. When you go into that calmness, that calm place inside you, you find God and you find you. When Moses saw something unusual, he saw the burning bush. And he, as it says, he turned aside. You see, we have to pay attention to what's going on in our lives. We all have burning bushes. And those bushes are going to keep burning unless we turn aside. And Moses wanted to know. He turned aside seeking to know. That's a key point. We have to be seekers. If we don't seek the truth, if we don't seek to know, we will never learn. Amen. When he turned aside to seek the cause of that burning bush which was not consumed, it's only then that God consciousness really comes to you. Really touches you. and Really comes inside. Now there's a principle there. When experiences come into our lives, when we have those, those sometimes negative experiences, when we have our own personal burning bushes, we have it, each and every one of us. Think, what is your burning bush? When that burning bush comes into our lives, we can do one of four things. Sometimes we flee it. The experience touches us and we run. Many of us look in the mirror and are afraid of ourselves. Many of us are in relationships and we just keep running, keep running, never growing through it, keep going through it. 
Well, we can <laughs> forget it. You know, procrastination is amazing. If you don't deal with it, you just put it off. You put off to next year what should have been done 10 years ago. <laughs> Sometimes we fight it by denial. We pretend. We give explanations. Sometimes it's personal. You know, you know many times <laughs> we, uh, we, 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 we make excuses for ourselves that we can't handle this burning bush because we don't have education. We don't have the right, we don't have money. Sometimes we make excuses for other people. You know, there are a lot of burning bushes that breathe. <laughs> Most of them are close to you. And we make excuses for them, so we never get past that. We keep going through it again and again. But the essence of the essence of the relationship is to face it. As it says, when Moses turned, God said, Who is it? And he said, It is I. And that's when we face the God consciousness and say, it is I in need of prayer, in need of help. We have to seek to find. We have to knock to open. We have to ask to get answers. God told Moses, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. You see, our shoes represent our present knowledge, our present understanding. And so when we have the burning bushes in our lives, we don't necessarily have the knowledge to deal with it. So many times what we think we know, we don't know. You say, let us not be led by our own understanding. We can live a whole life past on wrong assumptions. But it says, take off your shoes. In other words, remove your own understanding and acknowledge that you don't know. Then God consciousness can come to you. You see, the universe is harmonic. You only attract that, that which you accept. When you seek God, God seeks you. When you run, God runs. In and out. And so the first step to the path is really recognize that you don't know. And then to be open and receptive to the words, to the theory, to the, to the, to the love, to the understanding and wisdom, wisdom of God. To be open to the presence of God. I am open to the presence of God. Let us say that together. I am, I am open, open to the presence of God. God. Just let that sink in. <coughs> when we're open to the presence of God, we can then receive our mission. See, God doesn't create junk. Everything in the creation is for a purpose. The ants, the birds, everything is for a purpose. The vultures, everything. So why not us? Aren't we created for a purpose? Yeah. A destiny? Yes. yes. And so when God, when we're in that communication with God, we can now hear, we can feel that destiny, that purpose, each of us. Sometimes we let our present condition confuse us so bad that we just think we cannot be a child of God. But when we stop and pay attention, it comes. But it's interesting, we always have to kind of challenge God. You know, Moses, when God shared his mission, your mission yes. to take you out of darkness, to take you out of whatever captivity is in your personal life, you would know what it is. <laughs> Moses said, hey, you know, they won't listen. <laughs> you know, well, who, who, who shall I say sent me? <laughs> and God says, I am that I am. I am is the making power. I am is the name and nature of God, the making power, the, the, the power to create all that is. And so God says, tell them, tell them, I am sent you. So I am is your ability to create that which you want to be. I am. Whatever you put after I am, you are. 
I was teaching this in a southern church, and the lady, she wasn't that it. She said, well, whatever you put after you, I am, you is. I said, bad English. <laughs> but good sense. <laughs> so I am the making power. That first step on the journey, on the path, is to say I am. I possess the power to make things happen. I possess the power to change my world. In the book of in Isaiah, it says, let the weak say I am strong. You see, whatever you put after I am, you are, and there's no limitations. And so, that's first step, I am. I am one with God. Let's say that together. I, I am one with God. The second step of the journey is, I will. Once God, the divine presence, has revealed your life mission, there's a tendency to, strip, to shrink back and to be doubtful. You know, we've been entrusted to parents in a world that may not love us, and so Moses was doubtful. You know, when God kept telling him his mission, he declared his own weaknesses, saying, you know what, hey, I, I stutter. <laughs> you know. All of these limitations. You know, we keep our limitations alive. God said to Moses, what's in your hands? What's in your hands? We have in our hands everything we need to get everything we want. That when the burning bushes appear in our lives, we have in our hands the power to, to solve the situation, to bring about the goodness. Moses said, I have the rod, the rod in my hand. God said, that rod can be a serpent. That rod can, can turn water into blood. That rod can change your hand from one color to another. We have a rod in our hands. It's our consciousness. You know, the second law of success, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Whatever your situation is, whatever your, the darkness, then once you change your thinking, you've created the pathway yes. to the new you. And so, the will is a moment-to-moment -moment expression of your oneness with the Creator. The will is an expression of your faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And so your will is your faith in action. You know, the great basketball players move without the ball because they can see in their mind two players down the line, the great chess players do the same thing. We have that power to see where we want to be and how it's going to exactly be. And so once you have tapped into your will, then you have the unlimited power of God to make it happen. The third step on the path is I do. You know, you can, you can say I am, you can say I will, but sooner or later the rubber hits the road. <laughs> you got to do something. Moses had to turn to get God's message. In the Habakkuk, the second chapter, the second and third verses, it lays out really the principle for the I do. It says, write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it. Now if that isn't a plan, <laughs> You know, you go out and spend all this money on motivation books and just write that Habakkuk is one of the shortest books in the Bible. You can take that and you're done. <laughs> it says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Your vision operates in God time. And so when we establish that relationship through the I am and through the will, then we are on God's cycle. And so it said, though it may tarry, wait for it it will surely come to pass. You see, we have to get our own consciousness up to the level where we can accept the manifestation of the dream. Sometimes we say, dream big, yes. Well, why don't my big dreams happen? Because you're not there yet. But you can get there, because whatever you dream can be. It's clear what the Bible says, where there's no vision, the people perish. So, this path, this work, is all laid out. In James it says, Be you doers of the word and not hearers only.
People can come to church and hear the word and say it was a nice word. But you must act on that word. You must move with that word. That word must become you. I had an uncle who used to, oh man, he was a terrible person, you would think, on the outside. You know, some people who spew negativity, he had nothing good to say about anybody. But he was brilliant. So they said, well, how did you ever learn from him? Well, I, that was my burning bush. <laughs> I mean, he was like a bush on fire. I learned from him by watching his feet, following where he went, and ignoring what he said. Because he was a true person. He, he was authentic. It's just that he wanted to scare people away. It's almost like he wanted to, to, to push you away so you can see, couldn't see the goodness that was in him. We do that sometimes, don't we? <laughs> so, the I do is the key. I do with persistence. I do with patience. I do with passion. I do knowing it will be done. I'll say it and then you repeat after me. I do with persistence. I do with persistence. I do with patience. I do with patience. I do with passion. I do with passion. And I do knowing it will be done. And I do know it will be done. Oh, great. Oh, got it. The fourth step I become. The fourth step is like the validation of, of the I am, of the will, and of the actions. If you put in the work, the results will come. If you plant the seed and pull up the weeds and water it and do all those things necessary to nourish the seed, the plant will grow. Yes. And so if you've done those first three, I become is an automatic conclusion. I am that I am. I become the present expression of God. I become the Christ. Yes. I become the symbol of perfection. I become the manifestation of God consciousness in human form. Yes. It changes the way you act that way. See, those burning bushes put that pressure on you. Like, you know, a, the difference between a diamond and a piece of coal is only pressure. We got a lot of coal in here, don't we? <laughs> but when, when the pressure comes, when those burning bushes come, the pressure of people, the pressure of pain, the pressure of fear, the pressure of lack of love, the pressure of abuse, when those pressures come, they force you to grow. Remember I said you either grow through it or you'll go through it again. So once you've grown, you become the I am. So this journey now is in stages. You know, life is like a, an infinite staircase. We I am, we see that which we want to be. We will it to be so. We act on it. We become it. We get on that step. But then there's something in us that our mission is greater than we are. Our purpose is greater than we are. And there's something else to say, there's more work to do. Yes. There's somebody else I have to touch. Yes. There's somebody else I have to heal. There's somebody else, and it starts all over again. I am the great healer. I will it. Yes. I do it. I become the great healer. And then you operate on that step, and again, <laughs> you want to move on up. And so, this whole process, creates a harmonic relationship with the universe. See, the universe is created in, in, in harmony. The universe is like a great big symphony. And when everything is in tune, you can feel it. And you know, you've seen a symphony, you can feel the power of it. When you were singing, you can feel it. That whole idea of the universe being a symphony means that we have to be in tune. And we get in tune by, our, by handling our personal burning bushes, yes. by purifying ourselves so that we can grow through to the next level. As this process takes place, we talk about the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. As this process takes place, at each level of becoming, we become magnetic. We begin to pull into our space, into our life, into our experience, everything is congruent with it. 
And I, I, you know, the law of attraction, this is it. I am, I will, I do, I become. And once you do all the things, this is life scattered about the surface. But when you become congruent, when you become one with your God consciousness, you attract into your space all that you need, the people, the experiences, the knowledge, you attract it into your space so that you can then have the power, tap into the power to move on to the next level. Amen. And so let us close and share those four principles again. I'll say it and you repeat after me. I am. I am. I will. I will. I, will. I, do, I do. I do. I become. I become. The journey is a continuous realization of your worthwhile purpose of your destiny. And each of us has a purpose and a destiny bigger than we could ever imagine, which will be revealed to us as we move on up the steps to our higher self. Yes. And so it is. It cannot be otherwise. And we rejoice. Yes.